Today we have Miriam Valero as a guest. Last week we already shared her video with you and today we invited her back to have a little chat and get to know the creator behind the artwork a little bit better. If you want to have access to the full one hour long interview that I did with her, I invite you to support us on Patreon. On Patreon you can not only access the full one hour long interviews, but you also get access to all of our content one week in advance and some additional bonus content as well. Enough from me though, let's jump right into the interview and let Miriam introduce herself. So I'm Miriam. Uh, I'm a hip hop professional dancer. Uh, I can dance other styles because I study like a little bit of everything when I was younger, but I, I always love hip hop and I'm really focused on that since the beginning of my career. So that's why I always say hip hop dancer, like in big, like the title. And yeah, I started dancing when I was uh, 15. And at the beginning it was like, I think like for everybody just go to a dance school one hour per week to see what happens, to see what you feel, to just have fun. And But little by little, I realized that I really like that. And I wanted to, to, to dance more every day, to practice more every day. I, I wasn't tired about that. I didn't mind if it was 12 on the night or it was Sunday, I just wanted to dance. And I also love to travel. So for me, it's like the perfect combination. Yeah, so like that, I started little by little to travel and then I found what I really wanted to do. Like it, it's focus myself in, in dance, but I really wanted to focus my dance in freestyle. Um, um, yeah, since today. <laughs> That's nice. But what was your your path that you took somewhere to, to where you are now? You said you studied, um, but were you able to study there hip hop in that sense as well, how you do it now? Or because to my understanding as a non hip hop dancer, I see hip hop a lot happening more in the urban field um, as well and don't see it as represented in art institutions and study courses and this kind of stuff. So yeah. how does that come together? The thing is that in Spain, we don't have like an institutional study of hip hop. I think in most of the countries, there's no that as, uh, maybe you know that hip hop comes from the street and it's a really, really young dance. Um, in fact, the, the first hip hop dancers, they are still alive, a lot of them. So the, the way of learning hip hop, if you want to get deep into it, is to, to travel, to trying to find information by yourself. And sometimes it's difficult because sometimes you, it's, it's not like when you go to an education, you know that they, they give you everything. You just need to practice. But for me in hip hop, I, I really need to, to find a way to, to travel, to try to meet people, to try to meet the pioneers, to try to uh, have uh, workshops with them and then ask them how was that, how was this and practice with them. And yeah, my, my, my path, it's, it's travel. Travel, it was give you the, the, the way of no dancers around the world, of no uh, people, of no the, the, the dancers that you are looking up to. So then you can one day be there. That's beautiful. You talk about dancers to look up to, so there are some role models that you have for yourself or? Yes, of course. I, I'm the kind of dancer that I think that you can get inspired of everybody so it's not just about the level of your dance uh, sometimes when when for example talking about freestyle when you freestyle it's that it's free so everyone has something special that you can learn from 
but of course I, I have a lot of dancers that I, I love and I want to be one day there with them. It's, we always have inspirations, I think. Yeah. Yes. You say to get inspired by all kinds of things and everybody has their thing to dance from. What I'm curious is, is there, what is your inspiration there if you take other dancers out of the equation? So what is an inspiration or role model or whatever in that sense that you have that's not also a hip hop dancer? For, for me, when I need to inspire myself for dancing, of course, we always look other people that, that dance, but if I really want to be like, like find my inspiration, it's not dancing. I try to find it in life. I try to find it in the relationships between people, in, in my experiences, in some, sometimes it's just a feeling, you know? It's, it's not like looking other dancers and then I try to copy something. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's living. It's my inspiration. <laughs> That's a very big inspiration. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, especially as, to my understanding, I mean, dance and all the forms of art are a form of communication. And the style, be it hip hop, be it ballet, be it whatever, is just to give it a shape. So I think it's very beautiful to look at other things than other dancers to be stimulated to communicate. Mm. To just copy words, but to get your own sentences and then choose the words for them yourself. I think that's very important in life. Yes, of course. Um, in hip hop, though, what is it that you said from beginning on almost that hip hop really was your thing? What is it about hip hop that fascinates you so much? It's, it's the music. Mm -hmm. I think that I dance what, what I dance because I love the music. So when you hear the music, it, make you, it makes you move. That's why we dance. So when, when I hear, I, I, I love all the music, but when I hear hip hop music, it's something deeper here that makes you enjoy it more, that makes you uh, move, move more. Nice. Now, I, when I did my little research before this to look at Korea, who is this person that I'm interviewing, um, I found that you're also an organizer of a festival called Feel the Soul. Yes. And I'm intrigued, what is that? And what is this festival? What's, what's going on there? Okay, so um, it started uh, around six, six years ago. And it was an idea between four people, me and another other three persons. Uh, and the thing was that at the beginning of my career in in my area, there there weren't dancers. I was totally alone. Maybe we were mm, less than ten people, but you know, spread. One person was doing one thing, one person other thing, one person other thing. And I remember the feeling about, yes, I want to practice. I want to dance with people. I want to create, I want to do something, but I, I didn't have the chance because there were no dancers here. So when, when me and, and, and some mates, we started to, to teach and we realized about that, we, we thought, hey, we need to create a community here. We need to create something and, and to make our community like active. We also need um, goals for them. We need uh, something that make them share, something that make them have like, okay, I, I need to focus on that because I want to do this event and I want to dance good and I want to uh, pass the press selection and then um, in, on this point we thought okay let's do a dance battle and see what happens 
and it started like a really small thing with local people and just the second year we we went crazy and we said okay let's bring one of the top dancers of the style uh, to the city and it was the first the first time that an international dancer came here so people were really shocked you know when you meet someone that is really experienced in something for the first time it's like whoa it opens your mind and just little by little it keep growing and every year was bigger with more people and yeah, last year it was the last time the the 2020 the january 2020 that we did it and it came like more than 100 of hip hop dancers in the adult category and what is important about our event it's not just a, an adult's battles we really care about the kids because we think that the, if you want to create a strong community, you need to work it from the beginning. So it's not just the adults. To be an adult, you need to care about the kids. So it's like we have like a lot of categories for everybody. And this year we put like an after party for the first time because it's the first time that we have like and a, a huge amount of adult dancers that, that can be there, can, can share after the event. And also we have workshops to give people the opportunity to learn from the, the judges and the, the really good dancers that come. So yes, and the intention is to do it bigger, little by little. Maybe in the future, it's going to be one week uh, festival <laughs> instead of one week. Well. How long is it? It's it's just one weekend for the moment. Yes, just two days. Nice. So you sounds like you're really growing something there, and that's beautiful. Uh, now, where do you see the um, the role of this festival in your local community? Sorry. Where do you see this this festival that you're organizing? Um, in the community of both hip hop dancers, but as well inside of your local community, because you said there were not so many other people before in that style dancing. So how did that change over the years that you're doing this festival? Yes, it has changed, of course. It, it, it's because of what I say before, that when people have like the motivation for do something, it's for me, I, I can dance just for dance because I love it. But sometimes for some people, they need a motivation. Mm -hmm. And this is the main objective. And also to inspire other people to, to do things because it, it in a community, it can't just be us. We need more people to be creative. We need more people to do, to do events, to do parties, to do jams. So if we can inspire more people to, to do things, maybe at the end of the years we have um, 15 events and that's how our community grows. Yes. Beautiful. Um, you started to talk about motivating people to, to do things and I'm curious, where do you see the role of artists in general inside of our society? Is it as well to inspire people to do something or is there more things that the role of the artist kind of should fulfill to your eyes? I, I think we, we have a really important role into the society because sometimes we can just um, be like an entertainment for people when they see us. Uh, but yeah, we also, of course, we inspire, we motivate, and, and what is more important for me is that we can give someone happiness, you know? When you look at an artist and the artist is really deep into what he or she is doing, uh, the audience can really go deep with him or with her. So. You, you can make people feel something. And for me, this is the best part of our, um, of our job. Yeah. 
make people feel. And I think in this situation, especially, we need to make people feel and don't think less and feel more. <laughs> I completely agree. Not just to feel, but as well to focus on community as well, what you said earlier. And, and to, to share, to, to be empathic with the person that is next to you. Yes. And this is a thing that I think that we, we artists, we have it. When we work into a community and we care about something together and we want to create something, you need to work on a, on, with a team mm -hmm. and, and we have it. So maybe if we can do like this and spread it in the world, maybe it's going to work better. <laughs> Let's hope so. Um, now, you said that last year the festival was growing, now this year obviously, well, you said January, so did the festival happen? Yes, right? It, it happened last year, on okay. January 2020. Uh, this year we decided to, to, to just stop and see what happens. Uh, it's early. Maybe if the situation gets better, uh, maybe we can do something in summer. I don't know. We are not close about that. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we don't want to do something online because yeah. our festival is really focused on the point that we need to share with people and to have contact with people. So... Uh, also, I feel that it, it's been a lot of online, online, online this year. In fact, we did other things online. We did other other kind of projects or events online, but not called Feel the Soul. Feel the Soul is going to come back when we can meet people in real life. <laughs> How are you as an artist yourself uh, living through this moment right now? Um, wow. <laughs> I think it's been the hardest moment in my career. And not just because of the situation, because it's hard for everybody, I guess. Because of my way of thinking and my way of, of and my personality. I'm a person that I've been always like so organized, like you know so I, I i plan everything i start january and i have my calendar like okay i have a show here i have rehearsal on monday on tuesday on wednesday i have a uh, two travels every month here 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 i have this festival i have this battle i have this workshop and when you see all your plans like out like suddenly and you can plan everything for me, it's been like a um, personal uh, hard work, you know, to, to change my mind and to learn, okay, maybe it's not just everything about plan your life. Maybe you need to, to just flow and see what happens. <laughs> and this is, this is for me the thing that I've learned this year. So uh, in my artistic career with this situation, now I'm on that. I'm really flowing because you can't plan anything. Maybe you are uh, doing rehearsal for a performance uh, during two months and suddenly the day that you need to, 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 to perform, they say lockdown and you can't perform. So <laughs> you need to find other way. And yes. <laughs> Is this going to change your way of working as an artist once this crisis is over? Will you go back to this proper planning or will it have an impact and will it change things? What do you think? I think uh, I'm going to find the middle point, the balance, you know, between my personality and that sometimes it's good just to flow and if the plans don't happen as you as you think in the beginning it's also okay 
because at the beginning of this situation, I, I really was worried about, wow, my work, wow, um, not just the work because of the money, but all your, your goals, you know, that I, I was on a, on a point last year that I was really motivated, that I was doing a lot of things, I was uh, practicing a lot, I was traveling a lot, so I was worried about, wow, how can I be motivated if I am in my home alone? with no one because we, 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 we've been talking about that, that art is about to share and about to, to, to have moments with people and you, you inspire people and you get inspired by others. So we really think that we, we need to find yeah, new ways to don't lose that. Yes. So, yeah. You talked earlier about um, that there's so many artists putting their things online now and there's so much online, online, online. How do you feel about that as an artist where you say, okay, I, I need this contact somewhat, this direct exchange and communication with the audience or with the other people? How do you stand towards this trend of everything now being online? So many artists just put their shows online. Mm watch um everything has uh a, a, like a good good thing and bad thing inside it for me the good thing is that um we can contact more people we can arrive to more people we can meet more people for example in the during the lockdown I dance with people from India. I dance with people from Latin America. And there's something that maybe if, if it wasn't online, it, it, it wouldn't happen. So this is good for me. And I also teach a lot online. I learned the way to teach online and to be an online student also. And this is really easy because I can say, okay, I like, this teacher in and he is in France or he is in or she is in Norway. Okay, you can just put your computer on and you are there. But also, I think that it's important to don't forget that we need the human contact. Mm. For me, as a dancer, there's nothing like a like a live audience when you finish a show and the, and the audience are there, the energy, the feelings that you have there, it's something that you can't have online. So I really want to, this to come back soon. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to Cap de la Vie if you haven't done so yet and to click the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you want to see the entire one hour long interview that we did with her, you can find this on our Patreon page. There you can not only see the full video, but you can also post your own questions for any future interviews that we will do with other artists. Or you can directly post your questions as well here on YouTube in the comment section below all the videos that we publish. If you're an artist yourself, then don't hesitate to contact us through our social media. All the information for that you can find also in the video description. Then all that's left for me to say is enjoy the rest of your day and see you next week. We come back with new featured artists every Friday and with new interviews every Sunday.